Welcome to Journey to Joy Live. I'm your host, Dr. Enjoy, and I have my friend Mike joining me today. I call him Mr. Cinema Therapy mm -hmm. because if you were to follow him on Instagram at yeah. Mike, I'm that guy. Yes, Mike, I am that guy. You will catch his <laughs> reels, and they are funny, and he always has what with them? With a glass of bourbon. Bourbon. Cinema Therapy. Yeah. So anyhow, he flew down here to join me on this episode this week. And we're here to talk about ADHD, parenting with ADHD, kids with ADHD, whatever. Yeah. We both have ADHD. So just a disclaimer, maybe we don't get to the topic we really want to get to, but that's what this is all about. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Talking about ADHD and just chilling and just, you know, being transparent because it is okay to talk about what we have going on. And that's why I do this podcast in general is for us to be able to be comfortable talking about uncomfortable topics. ADHD can be maybe that kind of a light type of subject sometimes mm -hmm. when people just kind of joke about it, like, oh, it's my ADHD or, oh, you know, but- It's very trendy. It's very <laughs> trendy, exactly. Very trendy. And if you had to pick one, yeah. maybe people would say ADHD, but it's still serious. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah, I agree. well, let's get started. So, well, yeah, I, I usually talk about how, how I met <laughs> the person that I bring on the show. How did we meet? Well, you're my husband's friend. That's one thing. You met my husband in college. Yeah. Actually, I, I met him in high school. Oh, really? I mean, he was in college. He was uh, at a junior college, and I was in high school. Mm -hmm. That's when we first met. Nice. We um, wound up going to the same college together. Um, the very first day that I, I got to the college, uh, I met the coach. Uh -huh. and he was like, yeah, we got to go pick this guy up from the uh, train station. Uh -huh. And so we get in this little, I think he had like a Acura legend or something. We get in his car, go to the train station. <laughs> Who's he picking up? Juan Meta. <laughs> Juan Meta. <Meta. laughs> yeah, so it, yeah, it was pretty cool. That's awesome. You guys ran track together. Yep. Okay. Okay. I knew I knew that story. So awesome. And then when I officially met you, you were in our wedding, which was almost five years ago. Yeah. So wow. anyhow. It's a long time. That was a long time ago. The rest is history now. History. <laughs> we won't say too much more about that. But those who know the details that we're fast forwarding, yeah. <laughs> it's good to be here. It's good to be here. So ADHD, you know, we got to talking actually before going live. And yeah. I felt like we were already having should've the episode. <laughs> we already should have been recording what we were talking about. It's some really great stuff that we talked about. Uh, but really just talking about our, our journey into ADHD. What is it? How do we identify it and just getting through it? But I mean, you could start wherever you'd like at this point. I mean, for me, I was diagnosed with um, ADHD, ADHD as a child. Yeah. Um, this is, you know, I don't want to say because <laughs> now we're dating ourselves. This is back in the oh, 80s. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, this is back in the 80s. And Most I was, of my viewers um, are our age. Okay. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so we were back in in the eighties, mm -hmm. and I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD as a child. And at that time, I think the only medication out was um, Ritalin. Yeah, and it was kind of still an experimental drug because they didn't really know much about it. They just mm -hmm. knew that this is what it did, and mm -hmm. it could help you with this. So, um, but you know, my parents made the decision not to go that route. Um, my mom's a nurse; she's been a nurse oh. ever since I was, you know, probably before I was born. So. Okay. Uh, um yeah they made the choice not to go that route yeah um i don't know if it was the best route do you it, think it had to do with stigma because especially back then there was a lot of stigma with medication yeah, what was, is adhd yeah, does yeah, it yeah. exist yeah there was definitely definitely a lot of stigma um and then as i got older like um third grade fourth grade fifth mm -hmm. grade you had those special classes mm -hmm. right? mm. those special classes were yeah. adhd kids Oh, interesting. But it was just the way that it was talked about back then. It uh -huh. was like, your kid, your kid's got a problem. Yeah. You think learning. of it as an issue. Yeah. Or that they're slow, like, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or LD. Yeah. And so that's what it was kind of labeled as. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, I was kind of happy like <laughs> that, <you didn't> <laughs> that I didn't have to go uh, in the class the with other class. kids. But as I got older, going through high school, getting into college, mm -hmm. I think they're called what? I, IEPs or IEPs? IEP, or Individualized Education Plan. Right. I've talked about that before. And so um, I saw kids that were on that. 
they, I mean, it helped them a lot. I mean, as got, a kid or when you got no, older? No, once I got older. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Once I got older, it was like, oh, they get extra time to take tests. Yeah. They get extra like um, uh, studying and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was like, that, that's awesome. Yeah. And now I want it. <laughs> right. Now, now I want this. Right. Um, but it was still, it was, it was a struggle because I didn't want to admit to other people that I had. That you had it. Yeah. And growing up, it sounds like you knew that you had been diagnosed with it, but did you find that out later? Like, did you know as a kid, I no, no, have no, no. ADHD? I found, no, I found right. that out later. But the crazy thing, my family used to tease me all the time because I was so hyperactive. And then it was oh. like, why are you fidgeting all the time? What do you need, Ritalin or something? And, oh, but, right, that was the underlying it. joke. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I did, I do. Um, but I mean, now we laugh about that now. But yeah. you know what was crazy? Uh-huh. I'm actually on Ritalin now. He's on Ritalin now. Yeah. And we'll get to that in Look a second that. as far as how that is going for you. Yeah. But I pointed out on my last ADHD segment that ADHD and boys look differently. Basically, you see the hyperactivity. You see them being disruptive and impulsive. So you're just like, oh, there's a problem. But with girls, they go unnoticed because they're they basically have the quiet ADHD, inattentive, not paying attention. Mm-hmm daydreaming a lot and that's pretty much how I got unnoticed throughout until medical school and that's basically when I was diagnosed in residency not even in medical mm-hmm. school so yeah. yeah 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 I can see that it manifests different in people right like genders but also people uh, yeah specifically. individuals regardless yeah. of yeah all that so in that case as an adult you started to notice it what did you notice like what was it disrupting um <clears throat> Hindsight is twenty twenty, mm-hmm. and so now I would say that it affected my relationships, mm. like uh, romantic relationships. Mm. Um, definitely affected my work, um, career wise. Um, not being able to sit down and focus on things, mm-hmm. you know, always up out of my seat, um, in somebody's office across campus, somewhere. Mm-hmm. and and. <laughs> You look at the clock and it's like 4 30. It's like, where'd the I time go? I didn't get nothing done today. Yeah. Like, they about to fire my ass because mm-hmm. I ain't nothing. Like, and it was at that point I was like, yo, I gotta do something. I gotta do something. Because a lot, a lot of people don't notice, like, with ADHD, yeah, you, you have a hard time paying attention, mm-hmm. but it's usually to the things that, that don't interest you. Correct. Right? Mm-hmm. If it's something that I'm interested in, oh, I'm super, I'm hyper focused. You mm-hmm. know what I'm so yeah. Stuff that, you know, uh, you don't want to pay attention to or can't pay attention to or it's not interesting. Mm-hmm. And that's what you have a hard time with, you know. And that confuses people because then they feel like, well, I can pay attention to this thing. So maybe I don't have it, but yeah. that's just it. If it yeah. stimulates you and you're interested, yeah, you're, you're, you're okay. Yeah. You can focus on that, but it's mainly the things you have to do yeah. that you don't want to do. That you struggle with. Or the outside looking in. Mm-hmm. Um, people think that you just pick and choose what you mm-hmm. want to do. Oh, you can focus. Because you can focus on this. So you can focus. Mm-hmm. You don't have ADHD. ADHD. Mm-hmm. Right? And yes. that confuses parents when they have kids who have ADHD. Because it's like, you think they're just being disruptive or oppositional on purpose. Mm-hmm. Or defiant. And you're yeah. just like, why aren't you doing this? You, you can focus all on your video games. But you can't focus right. on your homework. What's yeah, wrong yeah, with yeah. you? Yeah. It's the ADHD. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about ADHD in parents mainly. So fast forwarding, let's say you became a parent before you got on medication. Yeah. Right. So how do you feel like your ADHD uh, interfered with that? And also as a, a single parent. Um, with parenting in general. Parenting in general or anything specific, you can go. <laughs> Take that wherever you want. So I would say that um, I always wanted to be a parent, right? So when it came to, you know, focusing on my child, Mm -hmm. that was easy because that that falls into the category of uh, what I want to do, right? Ah, As opposed to what I need to do. No, so I can't really say it affected me parenting wise. Okay. Um, But it gave me... Um, a different outlook on parenting when I have to tell my child five and six times to do something. Mm -hmm. I start to reflect on myself, right? There's a little more patience, a little more compassion, a little more empathy there, right? 
um, because so. you kind of see yourself in her yes. and your child is four. Mm -hmm. And so you might see some symptoms that look like ADHD, but those but symptoms are normal. Right. It's developmentally yeah. appropriate for a four year old. Yeah. So yeah, you, you so. it kind of gives you that, that um, ability to empathize with her and yeah. that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So for me, I know it can affect my parenting and I have a 12 year old. So he's in sixth grade and the teachers might send all these emails about the homework and all the assignments. And it's really good because kids don't remember to say, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have this project. So it's good that the teachers reach out all the time and tell us all these things, but it overwhelms me. And I don't feel like I'm organized when it comes to reading all these emails from teachers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what affects me. Yeah. Now that you say that, I'm yeah, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Keeping up with because I miss emails. I miss a lot of emails. You know. I, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. Emails or just being consistent. You know, <laughs> I have it in my reel, the joyful parenting reel for this. But being consistent with what you tell the kids and how you discipline the kids. And just being on the same page with yourself. Of course, if there's another spouse involved, it's being on the same page with the other spouse. Other, yeah. But like sometimes you forget what you even tell your child mm -hmm. or you forget to be consistent on how you discipline them or what you told them to do. Like, oh, you need to read every day at this time. Mm -hmm. And then the next day they're not reading. And then you forget that you told them that. And then you're just like, OK, uh, why don't you do this? And then that confuses them mm -hmm. yeah. because you're confused because yeah. you're disorganized as the parent. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you deal with the organization part? That's when you get your treatment that you need. So what does that look like? Though? So what it can look like is you don't have to get medication. I've tried medication <laughs> in the past. I'm not currently on medication. Uh, you're on it. You know, it, there's different ways to treat ADHD. There's uh, making sure you have a schedule. Mm -hmm. Right. So that can be as far as on the phone, you can use a schedule or a calendar or make sure you keep lists and write mm -hmm. things down. I like the checkbox therapy. I call it checkbox therapy because when you make a list and you make a little square and then when you completed that, you checked it all. It feels good. <sighs> it, feels <really> good. <laughs> it feels good. So keeping lists, yeah. keeping a calendar, using reminders. I have, oh, my agenda's over there. It's too far away. But you can have one that you, you keep on paper or something in your phone. Phones may not be that helpful because if you get all mm -hmm. those notifications popping up, and that just distracts you. And where yeah. you at? A rabbit hole of reels. I'm definitely a paper person. Mm -hmm. And I can do the checklist. Uh, I enjoy the checklist. It's very satisfying to be able to go and just check that right off your list. Mm -hmm. The thing is, can I remember to make the list? Yeah. That's my problem. Or remember to look at the list. Well, I'll keep the list. If I'm working, the list is right in front oh, of me. Oh, good. Right good. In front of my keyboard. But I have to remember to make the list. Yeah. And so my problem is my type of job, excuse me, my type of job, as soon as I walk through the door, it's it's go time, right? Mm -hmm. So I might not have the time to sit down and write out the tasks to do for the day. Yeah. And if I don't get to that, then I'm not going to get to it at any point in time in the day, I promise you. Right. Yeah. And, and so, so it's taking that time to do that. And time management is a part of this too. So we got Jessica here. Uh, it's a little delay, but she said, come on, patience, compassion, and empathy. That's what you had said <laughs> early about how we can deal with raising our kids, whether we have ADHD or not. And uh, Marvin agrees with the making list. But time management is key. Like even with time management, it's also about using little chunks of time. Like if you have a meeting here and then a meeting there and there's like a little bit of space, what can you do during that space? Mm -hmm. Can you make your list then? Can you go do that other thing that you needed to do? Yeah. So it's a matter of filling in the gaps. Not that you have to busy, be busy every minute of your life, but being productive most of the time, whether it's being productive because I'm doing my self-care during this time because yeah. self-care helps with um other aspects of your life and being stressed out but in general like do you feel like so with adhd when you when people with adhd become forgetful and disorganized that can backfire and make us anxious mm -hmm. that can make us depressed because we're behind in tasks we're behind in this and just life is in shambles but it also can clutter our mind mm -hmm. like do you find that you get a cluttered mind i, I do i get yeah. a cluttered mind and then the house is cluttered. And that, that just adds to it, you know? That's a whole cycle. Cluttered mind, cluttered house. Yeah, because a cluttered house can cause a cluttered mind, and a cluttered mind can cause a cluttered house. Exactly. 
Yeah. yeah. And so the um, time management, like you said, is extremely important, mm -hmm. right? Um, you talk about self-care time. For me personally, I don't have self-care time. Like I'm just oh, finishing up, I'm just finishing up my master's degree. So I'm yay. done in May. Um, but we're talking about parenting. We're talking about a full-time job. We're talking about um, master's degree. And then we're talking about um, my business that I run. Yeah. So that, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, so yes, very cluttered in the head, you know, ripping and running here and there and everywhere, you know, very forgetful. Um, there are times where I just don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Like I know I need to come home and mm -hmm. straighten this up and clean this over here. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I don't feel like it. And so in my mind, that's okay. It is okay. But when do you get to it? But that means we need to build in our self-care. Mm -hmm. Just like you build in everything else that you need to do, you yeah. need self-care. It's only 24 hours in a day. Yeah. We have to build that in because we need our sleep. We need eight hours. Some people can function off of six, but I need, I need, I need eight. I go to sleep about could, 3 a.m. sometimes though. Every day just about. 3 a.m. But you wake when do you wake up? Uh, it depends. If I, if I have a child, yeah. <laughs> I wake up around 7.30. If I don't uh, have a child, then I wake up <laughs> 8 o'clock. Are those those days when you find that, oh, I need to rest because you had the five hours or you can continue to function? Um, I can continue to function because I've been doing it for so long. Mm. Um, mm. But it's not good, but I can continue to function. Um, but like I said, when you have things that you know that you have to, mm -hmm. you have to tend to, mm -hmm. and you start to prioritize things. Yeah. And washing the clothes. Well, yeah. yes, washing the clothes is a priority. Folding the clothes? No, nope, not, not a priority. I, I do live not out of fold a basket clothes. for a whole month. I will live, live out of a basket of clean clothes. I will. Yeah. It just shows what's important to you. I mean, as long yeah. as the clutter of the laundry basket isn't getting adding to that anxious mm -hmm. clutter that we talked about before, yeah. then it's okay. But yeah, I mean, I know for me, it's that give and take. So yeah, I have a busy day. I don't want to get up early. Mm -hmm. So maybe I could work out early, but there's that busy day. And then at the end, I work out around 10, 10 30 PM. Of course, that's taken away from sleep. Mm -hmm. But it helps me sleep better when I work out that late. And then I feel better the rest of the, the next day. Wow. So it's almost like a dose of medication that helps for the next day. Because I, I might be anxious the, the rest of the day. Yeah. The next day. So for me, if I work out that late, uh -huh. I'm up. Right. So I'm it's different. Up. I'm not going to bed no time soon. Like, oh. I might, I might as well, so your morning might workout. Might as well whip out the computer and just start working because oh, wow. you're up for the rest of the night. Yeah. I mean, I also can work out in the morning. It's not like it'll make me tired. <laughs> folding. <laughs> just as it, folding is so 2023, meaning like we don't bring folding into 2024. Yeah. We talked about basically how we can build in self-care because oh, everything yeah. goes back to self-care and well-being. Are yeah. you getting enough of it? Yeah. And being able to build that in because a lot of people that I talk to say, well, I don't have time for therapy. I know I have it. Just give me the medication. How do you build that in? Um, I'm at the point right now with my job. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't. So I take my therapy sessions during my lunch breaks. Oh, okay. Um, I ha have an hour block throughout the what's uh, Friday. Every uh, every other Friday, I have an oh, every hour, other Friday. Yeah, I okay. Have an hour block. Um, and I do it right there. And, and when you say you don't care, what I do mean, you mean? My job because, knows. I mean, okay. I, I tell my supervisor, listen. Yeah. I, this is what I'm doing at one o'clock. That's what it and is. And it's during your lunch, it so it's not lunch. like you're taking away from work. Technically, I don't take lunch, but. Oh, yeah. okay. But gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but they under, he understands. So it's cool. Okay. You know, and I awesome. do that and I, I enjoy it. Because you found that it's important. Now, was it like a hump you had to get over to be willing to do it? Definitely. Because a black male yeah, a was there. Yeah. So tell us about the stigma. Yeah. The, um, It's just like <laughs> black people, we don't go to therapy. They they tell you, oh, go to, go to church. Exactly. Talk Pray to God. about it. Pray about it. Like, yeah, okay. Ooh, I need help. So I decided, you know, I was going to go um, and search for a therapist. Mm -hmm. And so I take therapy, but I also have, um, well, she's a nurse practitioner that prescribes my medication. Mm -hmm. um, but it works well for me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I live my life without having any type of medication mm -hmm. or addressing my issues, right? And I was just kind of like that. Yeah, so yeah. So like now 
I want to see what it's like on the other side. Nice. Like, is the grass greener on the other side? Like, yeah. So that's what um, that's what I did. Do you feel like you reached rock bottom to get you to that place of well, what's on the other side? Um, I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say rock bottom, mm-hmm. but I was very um, I was very worried about my job mm. and I guess the lack of production on my part. Mm. Um, but then it also um started to trickle into my in my uh my business. Yeah. And so maybe this is a little more selfish. Maybe I maybe I wanted more for my business than for my job. That's but, okay. Um either way, I knew that something had to be done. Yeah. You know? And so that's that's what I did. And so I'm I'm happy about it. I've been to two two therapists. Yeah. And three ADHD medications <laughs> until we found the right one that works for me. We talk about that a lot because it's it's not going to, it may not be the first therapist where it works yeah. or the first medication that it works. Yeah. And now you finally landed on something that works for you. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. That's really what it's all about. I I always relate to it, like finding a spouse or finding um, dating mm-hmm. when you try to find a therapist because they're human too. Mm-hmm. So you found that match. Yeah. Yay, yeah. that's exciting. So your journey to joy, definitely, this is this is your journey to joy. Do you feel like you're on that journey? Are you far away? Um, <laughs> I'm definitely on the journey. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably far away. <laughs> but that's why it's a journey. I'm probably far away, to... but it is a journey. And I'm just starting. So, you know, I'm going to be far away. But what does that mean? What does joy look like for you? Because why is it far? That's a good question. Joy and happiness are two different things. Yeah. So you have to explain what joy and happiness is to me, because to me, they're synonymous. Right. To me, happiness is an emotion that you feel because of the situation. Okay. You have done one, right, one the other day, right? So I'm happy, like, yeah. But joy is a choice, let, not necessarily an emotion, where if something happens, like you got in a car accident and your car was totaled, but you're refusing to let that bother you. So you know what? I am peaceful. You use your affirmations. Mm-hmm. You use your self-care. I am at peace with today. Today's going to be a good day. And I have joy. So it's that choice to, to experience it okay. despite. And that's what I like to say. Despite dot, dot, dot. Because okay. we go through a lot. We all have different dot, dot, dots. So I will say with that, no, I do not have joy. Um. But with that explanation, um, maybe I can start that journey to joy. If it's a choice, right? You got to make the choice. So I haven't made the choice. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? What I'd like to say, because, yeah, that's one way of thinking about it. And another way alongside that is the choice of entering that journey is Mm -hmm. getting treatment, Mm -hmm. going to therapy, getting on medication. Uh, trying to find strategies that you can use to combat your ADHD. Mm-hmm. So that's also a part of the journey too. So I've started I'm yeah. halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so it sounds good. But like, how do you feel? I know you mentioned that you loved, always loved parenting. Yeah. So with that said, you were kind of stimulated to pretty much do well mm-hmm. as a dad. Yeah. Do you feel like therapies helped you in your ADHD and being a better parent? No, not necessarily. Um, maybe I'm being naive, Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that I had parenting issues that I needed therapy for. Um, yeah. That makes sense. I I just asked because that's the topic. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, That does make sense. (laughs) Okay. So I will, I will, I will say that, you know, um, therapy for ADHD has helped me become a better parent um just dealing with uh, um like i like i said earlier being more uh, uh, empathetic and being more understanding because i'm able to be more i guess introspective with myself right you know what i go through and what I, i'm dealing with uh-huh. so when it comes to dealing with my child i see myself with my child yeah right? so yes it has helped me in that sense yeah, yeah. And that goes to, uh, what was I telling you about earlier? I think it's this, the five C's. They call it the five C's of neurodiverse parenting, meaning 
if you have a child with ADHD or child with autism or learning disability, and but I feel like it's with any child mm-hmm. that you can have these or practice these five C's, especially if you yourself have ADHD. Mm-hmm. So practicing self-control, that's the first C. Mm-hmm. Compassion, which you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, collaboration, so seeking help wherever needed, mm-hmm. whether it's a parent or um, a spouse or friends or whoever. Uh, consistency is definitely key that's to key parenting. Consistency and celebration, just celebrating your child and praising them for when they do something that you want them to do. And that goes into another topic because a lot of times we feel like we were raised a certain way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, why am I going to celebrate that child? Or why am I going to do this when they're doing what they're supposed to be doing? But sometimes we're fighting against that generational cycle of, well, I should do this because my parents did it to me. It's not even a generational cycle, really. It's It can also be an educational cycle. Mm. Because when you look at... um, uh, education platforms like um, Montessori platform. Mm-hmm. Right? You're not yeah. really supposed to um, uh, applaud and, and, and reward your, your children for you know things that they should be doing. Oh, is yeah. that what the Montessori says? It is. Oh, I didn't know that. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't think it's you know a, a, it could be a generational thing too, but it also could be like a curriculum thing. I wonder what's behind that. Because why not? It feels good to be praised. Like, yay, you did it. It My Tyler praises himself. Yay. But that's also a fine line, too. (laughs) Yeah. Because now the child is doing things for praise. Oh. And if they don't get the praise, they're Mm. always seeking and searching for that Mm. validity or, or, you know. So it's it's a fine line. That is true. Well, Jessica says she loves that. Celebration. So, yeah, it does depend, but you need it in doses like you need anything else in dose. So you're right that you probably could praise too much or maybe it gives them a big head. And like you said, they might be seeking it. Yeah. So I could definitely see that. I mean, <laughs> mic drop and Jim. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, parenting is definitely tough. I feel like the key to parenting, if I could say one word, is patience. And people with ADHD, I wouldn't say lack patience, but it's difficult to have patience because, um, well, whether you're a child or an adult, you struggle with uh, experiencing irritability, Mm -hmm. frustrations. You're easily angered when you have ADHD. You're impulsive and you're not thinking. You You don't think right away, right? And that goes against patience. So therefore, you might react a certain way to the child because you're all those things that I mentioned. Or pull out the, the belt because not being patient. What do you think about that? Um, yeah, I, I think that you're right. I know, <laughs> I know for me personally, like even in like romantic relationships, mm-hmm. um, if we have a spout, mm. I need a minute. Mm. I can't talk about this right now. It might be two days later before I can talk about it. Oh, Seriously. Yeah. Because I can't deal with this right now. Mm-hmm. The frustration not having, not being able to, uh, I guess, comprehend everything in the moment Mm -hmm. and needing time to really think things through and Mm -hmm. flush things out before Mm -hmm. I start speaking. Right. Right. Well, I think that's good for you to step away from the situation as opposed to Mm -hmm. reacting on the emotion that you're feeling because that could ruin the relationship. But does taking two days to do it ever- That can ruin a relationship too? Yeah. Sure can. But that's what I need. Gotcha. That's what I need. Well, as long as the spouse understands that, I think that's key. Yeah. They understand it yeah, and they, because that's similar to one where when, when I get upset about something, I want to talk about it right yeah, now. Yeah. We got to sell it now. I yeah, think most yeah. women are like that. Yeah, but for so him, true. he wants to sit away and, you know, think about it and calm down. It don't take two days. That'd I got to run the scenario through my head, like the whole conversation <laughs> again. And... Could I say this? No, nah, I shouldn't oh, say that. Oh, that's true. Nah, no, I can't say, say that. Yeah. But it takes me time. Yeah. yeah. Two days. I'll come back to it. You got to find somebody in the way. You got to find somebody in the way today. Right. But yeah, understand. you forget about me. Right. Well, that's why it's good to understand your spouse yeah, and what right. they need yeah. what, and what you need. Because not everybody's going to be the same. <laughs> oh, June said, so it's not Marvin, it's June. She said to spank or not to spank. It's such a delay. But we were talking about whooping. Now we moved on to relationships, Jim. No, anyhow. 
Um, but yeah, so ADHD can affect relationships. It can affect parenting, which is a relationship. It can yeah. affect your job. It can affect your school. So if you think you have a lack of productivity with any of those things, get help, seek help. And that's okay. Yep. Yeah. We've been talking for a while already. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we close? Close by so quickly. Uh, don't be ashamed. Everyone, especially in today's time, everyone is going through something. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a firm believer, like we're not put on this earth to do, to do this by ourselves. Like we all need help. Right? Um, and so don't be ashamed. You know, if you need help, if you're feeling some type of way, mm-hmm. definitely, definitely seek out, you know, the help. That's key. And it's important to see a black male here because not only are blacks, you know, feeling the stigma, especially men are feeling it. So thank you for yeah. being here and flying down and doing it live. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. Fun. You want to give your Instagram again or how people can find you? Sure. So you can find me at Mike, M I C, I am that guy. Because <laughs> he is that guy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching, everyone. See you next week.